This time, we're praying for a good forecast on the sunny south coast. I wouldn't go a step further. Well, I start feeling a bit claustrophobic in here. Here I am. Pride comes before a fall. Mm. Yeah. Where house hunting doesn't always put you in the holiday mood. If you left, everything would be rosy and smart. But it's still good to be beside the seaside. Yet again, having to rescue you, Phil. <laughs> you can do whatever you like if you wear a swimming costume like that. <laughs> This week we're searching high and wide in the south coast county of Sussex for two very different house hunters. One picky pair with particular preferences and one forward-thinking, fashionable first-time buyer. Sussex. Rolling countryside, fresh sea air, bohemian atmosphere and an easy commute to the capital. These counties have always lured Londoners looking for the sweet spot between town and country. Hardly surprising that they're in the top 20 most expensive places to buy in the UK. The average house price in West Sussex being 260 grand. That's 100k above the national average. Sussex is where Colin Amory, an architectural historian, and his partner Robin Balance, a property renovation manager, want to finally settle down together after eight years of living in separate London flats. It'll be the first time we've actually had a chance to live together. It might be an absolute disaster, but then you don't know until you've tried. As a couple, they're hugely knowledgeable about property, which should make Phil nervous. Their plan is to renovate something from scratch themselves. Not surprisingly, they have very specific views about how they want to spend their whopping half a million pounds. What we'd like to do is to turn a cocoon into a butterfly. Perhaps a historic building, but something that has um, a real hand of a designer in it. I think we're going to be very hard to please and exceptionally picky. Fantastic! To make things even trickier, they're not just thinking about themselves. The property also has to be right for their beloved Welsh terrier, Bruno. Well, I suppose you could say there are three of us in this marriage. Bruno doesn't like busy towns, and I'm guessing he wouldn't want to live next door to cats either. Hopefully, he'll be very much an integral part of the search. Normally, we can whittle down where we look for a property to a few areas, but this isn't about location. It's all about architecture, architecture, architecture. So we'll be looking right across East and West Sussex. At over 1,400 square miles, it's one of the biggest search areas we've ever had. So I'm a little daunted working for architectural historian and a project manager. <laughs> um, given what you two do for a living, I, I can only assume you've got some fairly grand ideas about the environment you want to live in? Well, I wouldn't say they're, they're, they're obsequiously grand. I think we've got an idea of what we want. Well, I suppose what I really like, you know, is, is, is the 18th century. But on the other hand, if we came across a nice, gloomy, gothic folly in somebody's park, that would be just as good. How many rooms do you need? Oh, well, I suppose we'll start off with the ballroom, um, obviously the, the flower room. That's the, in the vast. You know. <laughs> no, uh, we're, we're, we're realistic about it. Um, you know, if it's got three bedrooms, Great. If it's got the ability to add another bathroom, brilliant. If it's got a roof that needs replacing, fine. You know, bring it on, Phil. Uh, how much? What about outdoor, outside space? Well, not, not too much not knowing. Too much, no. Enough for the dog, I think. Yeah. Yes, I've heard about dog. Bruno. Bruno. Bruno yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Bruno um, is involved in the decision-making yeah, process. Will. I understand. Bruno will make the decision. <laughs> okay. You know, you you can find these properties, but they are rare. Yes. That's the thing. It's all pretty straightforward, really, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad you think so. <laughs> In fact, this type of search is a first for us. So, where to begin? They've got 400 grand to buy the property and they've put aside 100,000 for renovations. They want somewhere of historical interest and architectural merit. It could be the shell of a building or an existing house, preferably in its original state. As far as size goes, they're not looking for a mansion, but my guess is they won't go for anything pokey either. It needs a secure garden for Bruno, and they'll only consider a country location or to push the edge of a small town. Now, I know this part of the world well, and even though half a million pounds is a huge amount of money, I still think for what they want to achieve, they're going to be really stretched. Our other very different house hunter is first-time buyer, 26-year-old Ashley Newton. 
she works as a sales rep for a radio station and is a complete novice when it comes to property. She's currently renting a tiny flat in Hove, right next to Brighton, but has been saving for nine years to buy a place of her own. She's got 30 grand to put down as a deposit and has also got very specific ideas about what she wants for the money. I like to have people round to um, cook dinners, socialise, just be the, the hostess and the kind of the hub of the party, if you like. Cheers! I basically need to be near bars or restaurants if I want to kind of pick up and go out. I completely can. Location to me is key. Ashley wants a one-bedroom flat for 128 grand. Her parents have offered an extra £20,000, but to keep her independence, she'd rather not accept the money. I would like to do it by myself and not have the help from my parents, and then it's been all me. Nearly two-thirds of first-time buyers get financial help from their parents, so don't worry too much, Ashley. To find her perfect party pad, we'll be looking in the compact, two square miles of central Brighton and Hove, with a beady eye on where the best bars and restaurants are. Is this buying of your own flat an important thing in terms of proving to your mum and dad that you are independent? Um, I know that I'm luckier, like, luckier than most people to be able to have kind of your dad saying, I'll give you 20 grand, but at the same time, it is important for me not to rely on that and say, look, look what I've achieved. Brighton. Yes. Beautiful, sunny today, although a little cold. Yes. Very expensive. Extremely expensive. We are looking for a one bed, but yes. uh, that's a struggle in itself. Yeah, I think I am kind of aware what we were looking at. And I've looked at quite a few single bed properties right. by myself, so I've got a good idea of kind of what my money can buy. For £128,000, Ashley wants a period flat with one double bedroom. A separate living area for entertaining friends. A kitchen with a door on it and a bathroom with a bath. And it must be in central Brighton or Hope. Well, a little bit down in the mouth. Because you're not searching with Ashley. <laughs> that as well, yes. <laughs> that would have been nice. A couple of happy days together, I'm sure. But never mind. You've got Robin and Colin. I've got Robin and Colin, who are absolutely lovely. It's just they've got a massive search area, very specific requirements, and they're architectural historian. I mean, I it's know. more up your street. It's so much up. So I think someone muddled things up. Yeah. Someone muddled things up. I Should it be me with word. Robin and Colin and you with Ashley, who is a very serious house hunter, who's saved up, done exactly what I would have advised her to do, you know, nine years ago. She's absolutely brilliant and I will be really upset if I can't find the right thing for her. Because if you do find it, you'll be over the moon. Yeah. yeah. Be, yeah. If I find it, I'll be, for Robin and Colin, I will be I think skipping if and jumping. It, it will be something of a miracle. I think you've got an up Everest struggle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the struggle isn't helped by the popularity of these impressive counties. Everyone I speak to just loves it round here. Wonderful, really vibrant community. Um, we've got everything for every age group. I think it's kind of quite quirky. We're near the sea, we're near London, we're surrounded by the South Downs. Really vibrant nightlife, for one. There's lots, lots, lots going on. Uh, obviously, you've got the beach, the pier. Um, it's so creatively diverse. Is it your favourite county? Oh, by far, definitely. So it's easy to see why Colin and Robin want to set up home together here, but also why it might be difficult to find them that one-off interesting property as prices are so restrictive. In an attempt to find an architectural gem within their budget, we've contacted 128 estate agents, 14 borough councils, 11 country estates and 12 auction houses, resulting in some impressive finds. The property I want to show them first is in the market town of Lewis, nestled in the South Downs National Park and less than 10 miles from Brighton. It's got a reputation for being smart but alternative, so large period properties sell at an absolute premium. Colin and Robin have admitted they're going to be fussy, and there's Bruno to please as well. Plus, this place is at the top of their budget. All in all, I'm feeling a bit apprehensive. I don't know what Bruno will think of being in Lewis. Will he be happy? He'd be very happy, yes. Tail yes. would wag. I think he'd be in my yes. I think he'd be happy, That's yes. Good. Yeah. Uh, slightly mixed street, although this 
It's a great two listed house. Your first impressions of being here and, and, the, and the street, what do you, what's going through your mind? Traffic. Traffic. It's a bit urban, I think. Clearly, these two speak their minds, but I just hope they appreciate what they could do here, particularly given it's still got some original 18th century features. It's arranged over four floors. The kitchen has room for expansion. There are two bedrooms on the first floor and a further two on the second. It even has a cellar thrown in for good measure. Ideally, I would have liked to have found them somewhere with a bigger garden, but they have got amazing countryside on their doorstep that should make up for it. Let's hope so, because at 399950, they'd be spending nearly every penny of their property budget. Good project for you. Hasn't been touched in, in quite a while. It is lived in. Only right. just. Just a project, isn't it? Just, just, just yes, a project, yes. yes. It's a bit low for yeah. me. If you can touch the ceiling, I think it's not, not a good... He did stretch there, Colin. <laughs> Hardly at all. <laughs> <laughs> bit low. Bit low. It gets lower as we go on. Well, it needs a lot of work. Yes. Yes. It needs everything to do to it. Yeah. And that's the garden? Or is it a courtyard? Yeah, it's a courtyard. OK. I'm afraid to say it's a no for me at the moment. I don't know how you feel, Colin. I'd like to go upstairs, I think. Yeah, I'd, yeah, we'll have a, a look upstairs, more. but... Is it three mm. floors or two? It, well, it's actually four, because oh, the, right, includes, there's, there's a cellar. There's a it's cellar. quite a large right, cellar okay. down there. Cellars are usually trouble, aren't they? You know, it's damp, yeah. it's damp. It smells a bit damp. Mm. There's, a, yeah. there's plenty of work plen to do. Well, yeah. there's plenty of work, but I just don't think that... Um... I think if I lived here, I'd spend quite a lot of time in Spain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And the prize for the greatest number of objections in the shortest period of time goes to Colin and Robin. I feel like reminding them that they do have an additional £100,000 to bring this property back to its former glory. Now we've got four bedrooms spread over these two floors. People were smaller when this house was built. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's no, true. they were. A very fine view of the bus station. Yes, lovely view. I, I sensed there was a little sarcasm in there, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Just a hint. Am I flogging a dead horse here? It hasn't got the proportions we're looking for. It's too cottagey, I think. That staircase is so narrow, you couldn't walk up and down with a suitcase, could you? Should we move on? I think we should move on. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Understood. Yeah. Point <laughs> taken. Okay. Head, Colin, head. This place is nowhere near grand enough for them. I think I can say with some certainty, we're not going to have an easy journey. They've got very high expectations. They know exactly what they want. It's just finding it that's the problem. And that's down to me. Yippee! This week, it appears it could be my toughest search yet for house hunters with a very particular taste. And it's no easier for me with a single girl desperate to find a perfectly positioned party pad. Partners Robin and Colin are looking for an architectural gem of a home that they can restore back to its original glory and finally move into together. The first property I showed them in Lewis went down like a lead chandelier, but I refused to be intimidated. Yes, Phil, remember you are the property guru. For first time buyer Ashley, it isn't so much about the property. Location is her priority. She wants a one bedroom flat in the centre of vibrant bohemian Brighton and has a budget of £128,000. Finding things has been tricky to say the least. The average price for a one bed flat here is nearly £172,000 and that's 44 grand more than Ashley's got. So it's going to be a challenge to avoid going to mum and dad for the emergency cash on offer. For our first property, we brought her to the popular Hanover area of Brighton, known locally as Muesli Mountain. It's got an eclectic feel with colourful properties and plenty of bars and restaurants on tap. We are set to go. Our first Brighton eye opener. Yeah, well, it's got good frontage. It has yeah. got good frontage, yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Phil works on his frontage. He goes to the gym every day. Right. I don't know where that was going, but... Yeah. Character from old building it was yeah. an old bathhouse. Wow. First Sounds impressions? Um, really like the location. Um, great area. I've been to a few pubs around here before. Great. No Thank time like the present. Yeah. yeah, let's get in. <laughs> this first flat is great, but it is absolutely no views. And it's this playoff between location and interior space that I want to test. Inside, there's a large double height living room, ideal for Ashley to entertain friends. And it's got a double bedroom, a kitchen with a door, and a bathroom with a bath. 
though both could do with some cosmetic updating. It's on at £150,000, £22,000 above Ashley's independent budget. So, this flat uh, is the biggest living space we've been able to find. I really like it, really airy, um, nice space. Um, yeah, shame about the wall there. Hmm. The kitchen is a bit dated, I've got to admit, Ashley, it needs an update. Yes. Um, but it's a good size. It's a good size. It's a proper yeah. separate kitchen, which is a, mm. is a, is a real mm. luxury. So, un bedroom. Mm. Un petite bedroom. Yes, it's well, cosy. Yes. <laughs> I mean, big wardrobe. Yeah. Big double bed. And what about this area ah, outside? That area does not belong to you. That so area belongs to the next door neighbour. People can peek in. So what you need to do, I think, is you need to have nets. Right. I know, a bit <laughs> sad. And do it with very fine nets so as much light comes in as possible. This is a brown duvet cover absorbing light. A brown cupboard absorbing light. Brown curtains absorbing light. Brown window frame absorbing light. Everything is absorbing light. Brown coat absorbing light. <laughs> yeah. Brown hair absorbing light. <laughs> if you left, everything would be rosy and smart. <laughs> Deep breath and ignore. I think this flat is great, but it's not without its niggles. And one issue, as unglamorous as the brown curtains, is that of the lease. Quite often, banks won't lend on anything that has a lease of less than 70 years. With this property, the cost of the lease extension is included in the price. You don't get a lot of your money in Brighton you nowadays. Do you do not! Crikey. I was a bit shocked. However, um, Ashley seems to have... Taking it pretty well. She's got a bit of vision. Whether she'll be able to bypass the walls outside the bedroom and the living room, I'm not sure. Or not. Perhaps if we want to know what Ashley's thinking, we could ask Ashley. I think I love the space and the layout and the fact that it's got its own separate door. It's just got a bit of work that needs doing to it. I just need to kind of do some sums on how long it's going to take me to save to make it look like I want it to look. Yep. That's very mm. interesting. You see, yep. she's got her head screwed on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Back with Robin and Colin and their slightly more complicated requirements. I haven't had a great start, so I'm hoping with our second property, the only way is up. This time I'm not taking any risks with location. We're in the picturesque but expensive village of Cuckfield, only 15 miles north of Brighton on the edge of the beautiful South Down. Right, well, let's see if we can do a little better here. Second one I've got for you. Uh, again, Georgian property, it is listed. We're on a high street village location. Hopefully it'll strike a slightly better impression. Yes, it has slightly more elegant proportions. And, uh, well, I think this is going it's to be... It's more a... architectural this time, mm, yeah. isn't it? The other one was very much a cottage, really. <laughs> Excellent, that'll do me. This bay-fronted Georgian townhouse has been run as a dentist surgery for the last four years. But I think the shape and size of the rooms offers the grandeur that Colin and Robin, and of course Bruno the dog, are looking for. As it stands, there's the remnants of a large reception area. First floor kitchen and three double bedrooms, along with two basement rooms and a decent sized garden. It's being marketed as a commercial premises, so they would need to get planning permission to change the use to residential. It's priced at £365,000, which would leave them a whopping £135,000 to do it up. Now, uh, this is, was, the dentist's reception room. Um, as you can see, there's no remaining fine features. It would all need to be put back. <laughs> But we wouldn't have to become dentists, would we? No, you wouldn't. That's relief. Because everybody hates dentists. Even, even dentists hate dentists. At the moment, there's a little loo in there and a sort of kitchenette, potentially en suite to this, which would be the master oh, yes. bedroom. Yeah, no lovely light coming in too. Yeah. No bus station inside. No, helps. <laughs> It must be very exciting, but at the same time quite daunting, given that you've got your separate flats in London mm -hmm. and you kind of almost commute yeah. between each other's lives. Mm -hmm. um, this will be really a... a it's... A, this, I think after eight years, this is... It, it's going from that sort of slight separation to actually, I think, throwing ourselves together.
and we've been waiting for it to happen, and it just hasn't happened yet. But it'll only happen if they make it happen, and that means being realistic about what they can buy on their budget. Are we on the right lines with this so far? I mean, you haven't seen the whole thing yet, but... I think so. I mean, it's, it just it, it has a really nice atmosphere. Even in its current state, it has a very nice atmosphere. And when it comes to looking for a renovation project, that's the most elusive factor. Colin, you up here? Somewhere? Here I am. <laughs> Are you hiding? <laughs> well, at least you fit in. It's the perfect fit, isn't it? Well, at least you fit in from a height perspective. It's got, it's got a nice feeling about this room. It's a good house. Who's harder to please, you or Robin? I think I'm pretty hard to please. Would you be a difficult client here? Extremely. Generally speaking, if you're looking for unusual architecture, then commercial buildings are always worth checking out. Oh, lovely view. More often than not, there'll be a duration of six months where attempts will be made to sell it as an ongoing business. It's lovely because it's actually got a very good s s roof height. If that fails, then usually you stand a greater chance of getting the planning department to change the use to residential. That's pretty amazing. OK, right. It's not too bad. We've got a basement entrance, which is yeah, quite, quite useful. Yeah, that's very useful, yeah. How are you getting on? Well, we've, hey. we've reached the Thought basement. Provoking. Yeah. It's quite, you know, if you were allowed to excavate yes. a foot or two, yes. Yes. you'd have a perfectly good well, space. That's yeah. what I was hoping. Yeah. yeah. You know, there are interesting problems to solve, but... It'd be lovely to give this, to, to return this to a family home. Yeah. This place could be spectacular, and I have to say I'm quite relieved to have found somewhere they like, but as far as the planning goes, there's obviously no guarantees. Back in Brighton, I've lined up a second, but very different style flat for Ashley to view. This time we're in Preston Park, a better location than the last. It's a young, vibrant area close to the city centre for shopping, nightlife and transport. There's been some talk of a prospective boyfriend, so as an amateur matchmaker, I'd like to make things easy. So, Ashley, you have yes. just pointed out my cunning plan. Yeah. You are on to me. I am. This yeah. is very close to the station. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Good. So anyone wanting to come visit you from London yes. could do so in a flash. Yeah, they could. If we knew anyone that wanted to visit you from London. That's right. <laughs> so, good location. Yes, perfect. Love it. Perfect. Love it. Yeah, oh. now you can walk into Brighton. Station's nearby. Yay. Sea's not too far away. Oh. There's a lovely pub on the corner. Oh, I like this. <laughs> On paper, this flat is a comparable size to the last one, but without the ceiling height, it feels slightly smaller and is not currently in as good a condition. There's a decent-sized kitchen sitting room, just enough room for a double bed and a smallish bathroom. It's being marketed at £135,000, which includes a 10 grand lease extension. It's got views and windows and things to look out on the whole way round. Yes. Not as quirky as the last one. But it could be absolutely charming. I quite like this flat because it's very light yeah. and, you know, you're on the first floor, but you're not getting the vibe the same as the last one. I don't know, it's strange because no. I see... No, I can see that the yeah. vibe isn't hitting you. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is the bedroom, oh. which has this view. That view is ridiculously lovely. So what is it that's bugging me? Is it the slight boyness of it at the moment? Mm, no, I think it was... The other place was so much bigger um, in terms of lounge mm -hmm. that it's made the lounge here look quite small. There are definitely some size issues going on and there's no immediate solution to this, but I do have a canny long-term plan if Ashley chooses to buy this place. Ta -da. This flat has the potential to go into the loft space with a bedroom and bathroom and a dormer window, but you're looking at the wrong side of 30 grand okay. to do that. So that's obviously a long-term thing. But again, at your age and stage, I'm yeah. interested in finding you something which you can add value to yeah. as you go on. Mm. Because two bed flats on the street, and well, then you're talking kind of 180. Mm. So it'd be worthwhile. Yes. It's tough. I'm like, I, I'm torn. I don't know. She 
wins real brownie points with me for being enthusiastic, open to advice and suggestion and just, I want to make Ashley my pet. I'm pretty sure that's illegal, Kirsty. Oh, don't be so silly. I hope she sleeps well, because tomorrow we've got another property to see and some big decisions to make. This week, we're in Sussex. Allegedly, one of the warmest counties in the country. But there's a chill in the air, and it's not just because we're struggling to find those property gems. First time buyer Ashley was left in a quandary after the two flats we showed her in Brighton. As for Colin and Robin, we've made some progress, but I sense there's still a slight atmosphere of could do better when it comes to architectural style. So I don't mind saying that I can hardly contain my excitement about the next property we're going to show them. It's a find of almost biblical proportions, and I think it could be exactly what they're looking for. This stunning Grade 2 listed church sits on the edge of the sought-after village of Hurst Beer Point, eight miles north of Brighton. Properties like this rarely come on the market, but because there's another church in the village, the local diocese recommended this one for sale. The profits would then go towards maintaining existing church buildings and for good causes in the community. Unusually, there is no guide price. However, we've been advised by the diocese that Robin and Colin's total budget of £500,000 should be sufficient. It has planning permission to be converted into a two-bed dwelling. We only came across it because simply because we were approaching all organisations on your behalf and we, one of the groups was the Church of England. No graveyard. Mm-hmm. Never had one. Okay. And it stands on a, quite a large plot for, for a church. church. Yeah. You know, with churches, it is always the mm-hmm. problem, the garden, mm-hmm. where do you park? I thought it was an interesting building, but I just do not want to live in a church. Full stop. <gasps> OK. Not much we can do about that. Right? It's always going to be that. difficult, but I wouldn't go a step further. Understood. <gasps> mm-hmm. Robin, do you fancy seeing inside? I'd love to because I'm so nosy. <laughs> Particular reasons? It's you just, might not it's want just to... that one principal objection I have, which is I don't think church buildings should be deconsecrated and turned into secular homes. Mm. I'm so disappointed, not least because this is the first really grand property I've found that they can actually afford. Huge proportions and stunning architectural features. It is, well, just heavenly. Current plans agreed by the church and the local council say that the chancel would become a bedroom, the vestry a bathroom, and the nave a huge sitting room. Another bedroom and ensuite would be created at mezzanine level with a kitchen underneath. But frankly, this is all academic now. What a shame, what a lovely building. I know, it is a lovely yeah. building. I, on the other hand, can see this is a really, really exciting project, something that I'd love to get my teeth in. So whoever does buy it, I'm available for the possible... Yeah. <laughs> Project management. Yeah, should we leave this? a card? <laughs> should we put a poster up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you are, skulking. Yeah, long face, I'm afraid. I was so chuffed. I was so proud of this. Yeah, well, God Little says gem. pride comes before a fall. Mm. I guess I just I, I feel that I should have thought that that could happen rather than me just approach Church of England and just presume everything would be okay. Yeah, but, you know, these things happen. Don't beat yourself up much. Well... Just a little bit. Confession over with. Time to move on. Ashley loved the views in the last property I showed her, so I thought I'd go all out with the ultimate view for our next flat. It's in Hove, just around the corner from where she currently rents and with easy access to bars and restaurants. It is, however, freezing here on the coast today and I refuse to stand outside. So it's foyer all the way for me. This flat is about having a sea view and being in one of these classic Brighton flats. But as you know, what you sacrifice is space. OK. This split-level, one-bedroom conversion is the smallest of the three flats we're showing her, but it's still bigger than where she currently rents. It has an open-plan kitchen, dining and living area. The bedrooms are tad small, but the views are amazing. It's being marketed at just over £148,000, which includes the £16,000 needed to fully extend the lease. So I'm sorry to say Ashley would again have to take up her parents' offer of financial help. 
Now this space has been incredibly, frankly, I'm going to use a strong word, stupidly arranged. This is a vast L-shaped sofa, which doesn't fit the room. That's just taking up too much floor space. Yeah. Right, so OK. So this is the room. Wow, look at that view. I know. I'm in love with that view. Um, I mean, the kitchen's quite cute as well. Yeah, you can... I would shift it round a bit. I think it's silly to have it there. But that is amazing. I mean, it's the polar opposite of the yeah. first flat. Yeah. First flat, big, but this is the view. <laughs> yeah. This flat, small, oh. but that is the view. There's one room that lets this flat down, it's the bedroom. It's a boxed-in mezzanine they created after installing a staircase. If you're being kind, you could call it cosy. Whether Ashley will think it's worth sleeping in here in order to get a good view remains to be seen. It is tiny. It's tiny. It's, it, it really is tiny. I mean, it, it could be made absolutely lovely. It's a romantic flat. Yes. Yeah, I can see where you're, where you're coming from there. Um, will I start feeling a bit claustrophobic in here? Maybe. Ashley is doing something that none of her friends are doing. Mm. So few people when they're 26 are buying their own flat. And her real concern is that she has somewhere that her friends are going to want to come to. She doesn't want to spend all this money and sit at home all by herself. So, Ashley, yes. where's your mind at now? I... Very different flats. Very different. Um, yeah, and two that I really like. I think we've got the first one. Yeah. Gorgeous living space. Can see it being a real kind of sociable, fun house. Yeah. This one, really cosy, amazing views. I just don't know. There are some decisions to be made, but I'm happy at least that we've got two contenders. Well, it's twice as many as me, so I'm going to go for a gamble to try and improve my hit rate with Colin and Robin. We're in the village of Stenning, home to 125 listed buildings. It's 14 miles north of Brighton and walking distance to the South Downs. It's also, on the face of it, a conventional Victorian semi. Not the architectural period they asked for, but in my opinion, a property with great potential to become somewhere they could finally set up home together. Nice big project. Mm. You don't look enamoured. Looks OK. Looks OK. <laughs> What's the view like? We'll wait and see you inside. Mm. Yeah. Let's go inside. <laughs> OK. Oh, no. Here we go again. This house offers great scope for renovation. It's got three bedrooms, two of which are a good size, and two decent reception rooms. The kitchen is currently a bit cramped, but there's room to extend behind the house and I'm sure Colin and Robin could come up with a super clever plan to produce something spectacular. It's on the market at £325,000, which is 75 grand below their budget for buying a property and they still have the £100,000 for renovation if they need it. Come on in. Now, the lady who owns it... Uh, lived here for 72 years. Oh, that's nice. Robin, I'm assuming you've done lots of this type of a project yes. for, for your clients. Yes, this is... Uh... Oh, there'll be a couple of little bits and bobs there, but this is, very, this is quite an easy one, actually. Early days, Colin, you haven't looked around much of it yet, but architecture... It's almost better at the moment outside than in, isn't it? Well, the architecture seems to have disappeared inside. Then we've got these two other rooms. First thing I do is get planning permission to extend out the back here. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's just yeah. have a look. You can see a little yeah. courtyard and a privy. OK, yeah. There isn't a view at all. Well, that. no, but one could make... one With that, with that, you don't even have to lose the courtyard. You create an internal courtyard so that, literally, you've got a kitchen and dining area mm. looking mm. into something. Mm. I am nervous. Mm. I confess it, I am worried about this. It was, it's the last property I've got to show them, and it was a bit of a gamble. This is late Victorian. They wanted ideally Georgian or early Victorian. Um, it's not exactly architecturally stimulating, but I think it would make a lovely home. Um, whether they accept that or not is a different matter. And to date, of the four properties I've shown them, haven't exactly all gone down brilliantly. This is another one of these 
lovely your Pier, wonderful period Georgian your fireplaces. Favorite, favorite fireplace. No, it's a lovely room. Yeah, it sort of gives me quite a nice feeling. I can see the potential, most importantly. Yeah, that's, I think yeah. that's true. Yeah. Is this the sound of Colin and Robin finally matching their aspirations to their budget? Well, it's nice to see you've found a job. <laughs> I've found some use. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm good at one thing. It's a good, good period model. Yeah. yeah. How'd you get on? Great. Yeah. I think it's, it grows on you, this house. Yeah. And it has quite a lot of potential. It's got good feeling to it, I think. It's a very nice, quiet spot. But, you know, you'd have to do some interesting changes, I think, but yeah. it would make it a really rather good house. Interesting enough changes? I think so, yes. I haven't held a gun to his head either on that. So quite, quite, a, quite a mood change, I think. You've gone off brief on this one, but it's actually worked in, in everyone's favour. Could be exciting. Good, okay. thank you. Yeah. Good. All of a sudden, I feel like I'm back on track. Yesterday, we had a nod in the right direction after our appointment at the dentist's, and now this surprise choice is also in the running. But they're an unpredictable pair, so anything could happen from here. Ashley has had some time to decide between the Hanover flat with the huge double height living space and the cosy one bedder in Hove with spectacular views of the sea. She's come to a decision and we're back at our first property with the parents in tow. It's on the market at £150,000, that's 22 grand above Ashley's budget, so her parents would need to help stump up the extra cash. So it's important they like it. My feeling is that the first thing you need to do is take over that wall, paint it white, get some climbing flowers. I know what you want, Tasha, Banksy. Oh, yeah. Banksy, yeah. Banksy. But isn't this room lovely? Isn't it? Isn't it? Look I mean, at the high ceiling. Yeah. As soon as you had a big sofa across there... You could oh. always put the telly on the wall here. Or you could have one of those screens that pull down in the trash. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Money now again. we're talking. Yeah. 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 The bathroom really needs replacing, doesn't it? Where did this <laughs> colour come from? I don't know. I can't even describe it. I know. What do you call it? But, but it's a good size bathroom because yeah. you've got yeah, room for a there, cabinet there. there. Ashley's dad is clearly very alarmed by the 80s colour scheme, yeah. but he needn't worry. It's really all quite cosmetic. They could update the kitchen and bathroom and decorate for around three grand. No problem. And this is a kitchen with a door, Ashley. Yes. This is the one, Kirsty. She has a washing machine. Ashley, have you not had a washing machine prior to this? <laughs> you have been pretending to me you're an independent <laughs> woman about town and your mum is doing your laundry. No. And Shame drying it you. and ironing <laughs> it. Apart from toilet gate, it seems we've got an overwhelming thumbs up from the folks. I can see you being here straight away. And I can see me being here with a paintbrush. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, should we go somewhere and sit down and chat it through? I think we definitely should, okay. yeah. OK, Absolutely. let's find somewhere warm. Obviously, we've still got to get it at the right price. But I've had a great day. Over to you now, Phil. No pressure. A new day, and Robin and Colin have come to a surprising conclusion. I thought they would embrace the challenge of the dentist surgery in Cuckfield, but they think the best option for them is my wild card, the Victorian semi in Stenning. However, as we know, the casting vote must always go to Bruno. I, I know in the past you've been to houses where he's taken an immediate dislike. Yes, gosh, that's rather well put you off. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not just houses, whole towns. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but of course, he's on his first viewing, yeah. and, and gentlemen yes. are on their second. Yes. Um, I'm delighted that you wanted to come back <laughs> here, but I'm um, also aware that we've got a lot to think and talk about with yes. this house. Yeah. Okay. One of the issues with the house is the parking. Uh, it doesn't have parking permission out there. It does have right of access across, across the gravel. You could create a parking space here in the front garden. That, straight away, that means that's devalued the property for me on, on a development point of view. Okay. Um, Did he just say development? That's a new one on me. This is where I see it, the opportunity is. obviously subject to planning. You're limited by the windows. Yes. yes. Don't you get a second story on it? No, certainly um, not. 
But it was a big improvement mm. to the um, sort of functionality at the yeah. back of the house. Yeah. What do you think, Colin? Well, you'd have to be able to do something here, wouldn't you? Mm. It doesn't work as it is. You can hardly stand up in there. Mm. I don't know how this is going. I don't know whether they're thinking of it as a home or a project or a development. Uh, I can't read them at all today. And Bruno's not helping me one bit. Now, you had some ideas for this lovely big bath funnel. Yes, yeah, and it's such a lovely size that this could actually be converted quite easily and readily into the ensuite for that bedroom and then yeah. keep this as the family bathroom. Fun enough, I would keep that bath and just replace the, the taps. That's perfectly serviceable. It's a good cast iron bar, yeah. Cast iron. I mean, there's, again, with the, with the basin, it's a good basin. And there's no point okay. in getting rid of that. And people like the traditional touch. I couldn't help but notice that when you use the word people, when you were referring to people like the basin? Well, I think you're thinking of it now as a project, as a development project. I'm, I've got, I've got my, my thing on it as a, a, pro a prospect. Buy it, do it up, sell it on. OK. Of course, they can spend their money however they like, but my frustration is that if I'd known they were looking for a development property, then I would have shown them places that maximised the profit margin as opposed to somewhere they could live together. Time for a bit of a chat, I think. Meanwhile, in Brighton, it's down to business, as Ashley and I discuss our strategy for buying the Hanover flat. What is your feeling on <laughs> level of offer? Because obviously that flat is on the market at 150,000 and yeah. it will come with a renewed lease. I'd say the offer will be 137 going due to the fact that the bathroom is Disgusting. Yeah. The kitchen needs redoing. Yeah. So one, three, seven. What do you think? I think, to be honest, mm. that flat's been on the market for five months. Let's risk it for the biscuit, and we can only see what happens. Okay. Back with Robin and Colin, and I have to admit, I have no idea what they want to do now, because clearly the house we've just seen is not destined to be the family home they were looking for. Is it something that the two of you have actually? seriously considered buying it, doing the project, making some money, selling it again, and then using that pot of money to fund and buy the architecturally interesting house that you're after. This was our thought yeah. last night before we actually found out about the parking problem, uh, that it would be a very nice project in order to help us get onto the next stage of the ladder to buy our architectural gem. You know, it would only be worth doing up to sell if you could get it very cheaply. Yes. From conversations that I've had with the agents since our viewing, um, I don't think you're going to get it cheaply. I just don't. Um, no. the, the vendors believe it's worth 325 and they're not really prepared to budge. So a house together eludes Colin and Robin yet again. But with their wish list, it was always going to be a tall order in this very desirable part of the country. They're now discussing doing the whole thing again, but this time in East Anglia. It is slightly cheaper there, and I wish them the very best of luck. Andy, it's Kirsty. Ashley does want to make an offer, but it's not quite as, uh, as much as your client might want it to be. 137 is the offer. This is an offer made by a first-time buyer who is very happy to be very flexible. Right. Oh, right, OK. Completely understand. OK, bye. We aren't going to hear till tomorrow morning. I don't think we're done yet. And I also think, in this case, every £500 matters. A few days later, and Ashley's offer of £137,000 was rejected. She increased it to 138 but unfortunately, it still wasn't enough. During our search, we had found this one-bedroom period flat in Hove. We thought its size and location would be perfect for her, but at the time, it was being sold as a buy-to-let with existing tenants, so it couldn't be the home she was looking for. But all that changed, and shortly after our search, it became available with vacant possession. Ashley wasted no time in viewing it. It was a stroke of luck that the situation changed with the property and the owner decided to sell it. It's perfectly situated in where I want to be in Hove. I couldn't fault it. Had to have it. And she did. 
Ashley paid £144,000 for the flat and got the keys to her new home yesterday. She isn't wasting any time moving in with a little help from Mum and Dad. In order to get the space and location she dreamed of, Ashley had to accept her parents' offer of financial help. There, over the moon, she's found somewhere she loves. My parents, absolutely, they can't wait till I'm away for the week or something so they can move in themselves. You know, they absolutely love it, so I think it's almost tempting them to move to Brighton. And I'm sure it won't be long before her friends are around to help celebrate. I had my birthday last week and I've got a new property. It, that definitely calls for a big party, so... I'm thrilled to see Ashley so happy and settled in a home of her own.